Hey guys, this is Mike here at Area 51 and uh, back at you with another video today. And this is a great video. I'm super excited. I've been recording it now, different pieces of it for over a week. And um, this video, um, we're going to install a base shaker on my sim rig. And I'm going to walk you guys through the process. Um, these base shakers, technically, they are transducers. They're basically uh, speakers or subwoofers um, without the cone around it, uh, the the thin you know thin paper like material that produces the sound and speakers. That's taken away. So what you get instead is vibrations, which is why they're called base shakers. And we are going to install it on my rig in this video. And this is going to be an alternative setup to a button kicker. A butt kicker is a very popular name brand transducer base shaker product. Um, they sell them to go along with uh, gaming in general. There's there's games outside of sim racing uh, that you can use these butt kickers uh, for or base shakers for. Some people use them as part of their home theater setup at their house um, and put them underneath their chairs and things that they set in uh, to help immersion in movies and different things. Uh, but what we're going to use them for is sim racing. And the most popular brand by far is butt kicker. However, um, they're a bit expensive. Um, you could probably get a cheap one for a little over $200. Um, I know their main, their main one, which is the new, I think it's the, uh, butt kicker gamer plus or something like that is like $279. Um, it comes with the amp included, uh, in that. And the new version I think is USB and has the amp and sound card all in one on the butt kicker as well. Um, but if you don't want to spend that kind of money, but you want to get the same result, um, what we're going to show you today in this video is a great alternative. And I am all in on this solution uh, for under $100. Um, so I will link all the uh, products uh, in the description below um, the video if you want to check them out and do this yourself. And the last thing I ask you to do is if you like our videos and like what we do here at the channel and helping you guys out, just ask you to hit that subscribe button. We appreciate that very much. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers in our first year um, operating this Area 51 channel on YouTube. Uh, that way we've become a YouTube partner and uh, we are at just over 600 subscriptions. So um, we have almost 400 to go between now uh, and the first couple weeks of February. And so if you guys can help us in that journey and help us to grow by subscribing, sharing the videos uh, and encouraging your friends uh, in iRacing and sim racing to subscribe to the channel, uh, we would appreciate that to help us reach our goal. And I'm going to do some kind of giveaway when we hit that thousand subscriber mark. Um, got some thoughts on what that will be. Um, if you guys want to give some input, that's fine as well. But um, yeah, I want to do something nice for you guys uh, for helping us to reach our goal. Uh, when we do reach that th uh, thousand subscribers, we're going to pull randomly from our subscribers and uh, have a couple, maybe more than one giveaway. We'll see what what happens. But we just want to show, just want to show our appreciation here at Area Fifty One uh, for you guys' loyalty and coming and subscribing to the video, uh, to the channel, and uh, watching the video. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so yet. Uh, you can give us a thumbs up up if you like this video um, and it helps you out uh, in your sim rig build. Uh, if this video helps you out, give us a thumbs up and uh, that helps the YouTube algorithm uh, to get our video in front of more eyes. And then also the bell icon gets you notified anytime we go live with any of our live streams uh, or we upload a new content to the channel. So guys, don't want to drag this out any longer. This is an exciting video. Been working hard to put it together and let's jump right in now to this base shaker add-on to my rig, which is a great affordable alternative to a butt kicker. Let's jump right in and get into the unboxing and the hardware involved uh, in this setup. Then we're gonna go through the actual installation on my rig, and then we'll jump into the software uh, that runs this whole thing here on the computer that connects to iRacing and runs everything. So guys, that's what we're gonna cover in this video, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to look at is this Dayton Audio high-powered bass shaker. This is going to provide the tactile feedback here in our rig. I just uh, cut the top. Let's open this up. And what we got in here? It's bent, but it's a little poster thing here, a little flyer advertising. Uh, Dayton Audio high power bass shakers. This is the BST1, their Beast 1 model. And it is 50, a 50 watt bass shaker. Uh, 
they offer uh, they offer smaller pucks. They call them puck base shakers, but they offer those as well. Think about getting a couple of those to simulate the front wheel left and right um, on my car. But this is going to go underneath my seat. And uh, let me pull it out of here. This is it. Man, it is heavy too. Wow. This thing is heavy. Let's get it out of the wrapper there. And this is it, guys. The Dayton Audio Beast 1 Base Shaker. BST1. It's got a little plastic on the top there that you can peel off. Eh, I'll peel it off later. You see some air bubbles in it here in the video, but I'll peel it off later. There's where the speaker wire attaches. And we're going to mount this underneath my seat here in my sim rig. What is going to be providing the audio source and the power uh, to the base shaker for this project um, is this knob, knob sound uh, amplifier and sound card in one. And you can pick, I picked this up on Amazon for $35, a little under $35 with tax. It was right around $35. They used to be around $50 to $55. So uh, they got them on sale right now. It's a good deal. And let's open this up and uh, see what it is that's going to be powering our little project here. It will power speakers of any kind, and the transducer is basically just a speaker without the, without the uh, thin material that produces the sound there on them. And we get it out here. It's kind of stuck in there. There we go. Take it out of the packaging. Maybe I can get it out of the packaging. One hand because I'm holding my holding the camera with the other hand. I did this. I'm doing this video on the quick, so I haven't had time to <laughs> set up a hard-mounted camera. So this is it. Uh, it's got a knob here to adjust the power. Normally, if it's set, hooked up to an audio speaker, you adjust the volume right here. Uh, but this is going to adjust the um, amount of power going to the speaker for your bass shaking. Um, so that's great. You want to mount this close to your seat so you can adjust it to get the feeling right. How much bass, how much uh, vibration you want to come out underneath your seat. And then you hook the speaker wire right up there. Plus there's the power, the DC power input that it comes with the power adapter. It should be underneath the, should be underneath here. Now one thing to note about this is um, this power adapter is only capable, I think, of 60... 60 watts even though even though the, the, the uh, even though the unit's capable of putting out a hundred um, this particular um, power adapter is only I think capable of putting out 60 um, they sell an upgraded power adapter on their website for more money from what I've read um, and if so if you're running two of these base shakers and you're not if you're running two of these um, Dayton Audio BST ones that I got. If you're running two of these, um, if if it's not enough power, if you're not feeling like you're getting enough power uh, to each each of these using one, because each one of these knob sound uh, amps and sound cards will run uh, two of the bass shakers. Uh, it's got uh, power and ground for the left side, power and ground for the right side. Um, and so it'll run two, uh, each, each, you know, left and left and uh, or the power and ground for each side needs to go to the base shaker. So it'll run two of them. So, um, if you get this and you're using the stock power supply they give you, um, and you don't feel like you're getting enough power to it, you might want to look at upgrading to the more powerful, uh, power supply. But for my deal right now, I'm only going to be re running one of these, um, off of it. Um, and even so, uh, most people I saw, uh, that was doing a similar setup that I was reading were saying that the, the default fault power and even just putting out 30 watts per channel instead of 50 was still um, plenty good enough uh, for them for them to feel what was going on in the car so I uh, just wanted to throw that out there um, also comes here um, with an audio cable that we're not going to use that's for like an auxiliary audio there's two ways to get audio input to this um, there's an auxiliary port um, which you would actually need a, a separate second sound card in your computer to use that. And it's really meant for people using like cell phones and different things. Uh, you can connect this and run speakers off of it. But what we're interested in is this USB sound port. That enables the sound card inside of this, the USB sound card, to act as your, as your second sound card to use with SimHub. Uh, that's the software that's going to drive all this. It's got a power button on and off right there. You can turn it on and off. Um, what else comes in here? Uh... 
Here's a set of RCA cables to headphone jack. Same thing, you can use the auxiliary port if you wanted to to run from uh, an RCA source like a TV or something. I don't know, we're not going to use that. I mean, I might use it for some other project, but not for this one. Um, same thing. And then here is your... Here's your here's a USB cable that you can run that from your computer. It's really sh it's not very long. It's a short one. It's probably about two two three feet. Um, but for our purposes, this will work because I have a USB hub um, already on my 8020 rig uh, Velcro down. Um, and so we just need to this just needs to be long enough to run from the amp into the into the um, USB three hub. And it, it, this even if it's only two feet should be good enough to do the job so that's what comes in the box for that and guys that's it all the only other thing we got was that was that 14 gauge uh, speaker wire for 9.99 or something 10 bucks whatever um, so that, let's go ahead and get started on this project this is my this is my GT Omega Prime cockpit and uh, this is the seat this is the uh, RS9 seat right here and uh, we are going to go underneath it and we're going to mount this um, underneath the seat and see, I think I can do it with some zip ties I saw somebody else on YouTube uh, mount something similar underneath their seat there's some metal metal brackets underneath there I can probably zip tie this thing really tight to and uh, see if that'll do the trick alright uh, guys this is the bottom of my R GT Omega RS9 seat as you see those metal spring coils right there they're really solid um, they're not flimsy springs I mean I mean, I could probably pull and bend them, but a little bit. But as far as being mounted, they're not flappy and loose. Um, they're really solid, and I think I could probably use some zip ties and mount that base shaker right to those things. So let's get to it, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, I've got it mounted under my seat. There, I used some thick zip ties. They barely fit through the hole. I had to get some needle nose pliers pulling through. I got a couple of them like that. Um, and then I had some smaller zip ties I did on the front. Because once I had the back one, I think I should have, if I was going to do it over again, I would have used the thick zip, zip ties in all four corners and run them through all four. Run the zip ties all, through all four corners up front uh, before I put it on the seat. And then I just would have had to put it around the, around the, metal, around the metal thing here once they were already attached you know, through the hole of the base shaker. But that works. I put three of the little ones on just to give it a little extra security there and it's mounted underneath the seat uh, this is the R RS9 uh, GT Omega seat there's the base shaker and then I ran the uh, this is the 14 gauge speaker wire just ran it off and uh, just use a little duct tape this is the underside of my 8020 rig uh, underneath my seat nobody's ever going to see it so I just put the speaker wire in the channel there um, I put it in the channel and then, uh, and then just ran, and then you know used a wet wipe or something to clean it with, and then some a paper towel dried off, got it all clean. Threw some duct tape on to keep it in the channel. I'm gonna run it right out through there uh, to the outside of the rig, and then we'll run it through the channels and up and mount the amp, and we'll pick up there where I mount the amp here in just a second. All right, guys. Um, as you can see, I got the. 14 gauge speaker wire running from the bait shaker from underneath my seat there up into the channel here on my 8020 rig and aluminum profile rig whatever it's not all 8020 so it's like 80 40 80 something but uh, it's aluminum profile I got to run up in the channel there up the arm and I got some uh, tape there holding it in as you go up I got a bunch of other stuff mount there's a mount for my power supply for my DD1 my Fanatic DD1 I got it up and I got running here and I got it going underneath and coming out the other side right here and then going up into this uh, up into the amp here and I got the speaker wire around there I got the power cable uh, coming in uh, right here and I've got it velcroed thank goodness for industrial strength I can't get it off here <laughs> industrial strength self-adhesive velcro there so got it on there I put it right back on here and it's on there it's nice and solid that Velcro is hard to even pull off, like if you're trying to. Got the USB cable there, uh, ran. Uh, there's the USB cable, and it runs right here in my 7-port uh, hub. You can see I got all kind of stuff uh, plugged into the rig in the 7-port hub. I got this plugged into the back back here. Uh, that first port's for my uh, stream deck. But, uh, yeah, 
got it all here. I got the power, same thing with the power there. Uh, double sided Velcro. <laughs> You hear it come off. Let's me mail it right there to the 8020 industrial strength. Comes off, and then I got a I got a power strip here that I got that I bought specifically for these uh, aluminum profile rigs that uh, bolts into the rig itself there in the runner. And I've got uh, two USB power ports there. One powering my uh, hub up there, and the other I still have free. That I can run something else off of or charge. Yeah, guys, that's that's it. Let's, it's time to hook it all up to the computer and uh, see how this base shaker is going to function. All right, guys, now that we've got everything uh, hooked up uh, over on the sim rig, we have plugged it into the computer. you got to plug that... Um, that amplifier, the knob sound amplifier, uh, USB cable into, into the computer, either through a hub, an extension cable, or if you can get it close enough directly into your computer. Uh, once you've got that plugged into the computer, now we need to get the software that's going to drive this for us. And the software that we recommend here at Area 51 is we recommend SimHub. Um, if you go to SimHub-.com, and I will put that down in the description below, uh, it's going to take you to this website. And um, we're going to go ahead and download it. If you go right here at the top, it says Downloads, and you just go click on Download. And from right there, it's got a download button. It also has an alternative mirror download uh, button as well. And, and you just go ahead and download that to your computer. I have already done it, but we're going to go ahead and click the button anyway. i uh, show you the screen there, and you can go ahead and put it in your Downloads folder for quick and easy access. So you go ahead and download that, and then uh, there is some limits unless you get a license for it. And here's the thing. SimHub makes this very cheap. Um, that was their goal, was provide um, provide this kind of functionality in iRacing, not just for base shakers, um, but for all kind of things, dashboards. Um, in fact, the, the website is simhubdash.com. So you've got dashboards, base shakers, um, all kind of cool stuff and different functionality we'll look at in a minute. Uh, but there are some limits without getting a license. The thing is, they let you pick your own price on the license. So if you go here and click get a license, which is the page we're on now, uh, you pay in euros but right now the euro and the dollar are almost identical um, and it says you can give you can get a license for six euro eight euro ten euro fifteen euro or twenty euro um, and and it's your choice any of those dollar amounts as long as you donate something to them uh, get you a license so I went ahead and give them ten euro I did right in the middle there I didn't do the cheapest or the most expensive I just went ahead and give them I thought ten euro was fine it was right around you know just over ten dollars um, I, I think maybe it's close to eleven and so I went ahead and gave them 10 euros and they emailed me a license uh, for it. And so I have a licensed product and I would highly recommend you guys do the same thing. I mean, if, if you want to just give the smallest amount possible to get the license, I mean, you only got to give six euros, which is less than seven US dollars. Um, and it's well worth it. That way it unlocks the full functionality of everything that I'm about to show you uh, because there are some limits on the base shaker capability unless you get a license. So once you've downloaded it, you get your license, you install it, you apply your license, okay? Uh, and it's pretty self-explanatory in the software. I'm not going to go step-by-step -step through how to apply the license. Um, but anyway, it's pretty self-explanatory. They give you an email. I think the instructions are even in the email that they give you. So let's jump in the Sim Hub now, and we'll go ahead and launch that and jump right over to it. All right, guys, as you can see, uh, we are in SimHub. I've opened it up, and this is how it's going to start and what it's going to look like every time that you start SimHub. It's here on the launch page, and uh, these are all shortcuts to launch your game, but they're not configured. They're just the graphic, and it shows a list of the games uh, that – SimHub uh, is compatible with for multiple things, but none of these uh, links or, or, or launch uh, shortcuts are actually configured. You have to go and manually configure them to launch your game. And so that is what I am going to do right now and show you guys how to do. So in order to configure your game to launch, because here's the thing, what you got to do is you have to launch iRacing or whatever other game or simulator that you're going to run, you have to launch it here through SimHub in order for the base shakers or any of the other SimHub functionality to work. So we're going to go up here to the top left, which is where the menu, some people call it the hamburger icon, but the menu icon up here. And we're going to click that, and we're going to go down here to settings. And under settings, 
uh, there is, you start here under general is where you normally go when you first install the game. And then you would go to games right here. And this has all those games listed above. And you can see the all the green check mark. That means they are all displayed uh, in your shortcut list. Now that was a lot of them and you have to go through to find iRacing if you're only going to use it with iRacing. So I'm going to go and unselect anything that I don't own and, and, and would never use this with. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck some of these here that I don't own. Um... And that'll get me down to only things that I own showing up in the list, even though all I've really configured at this point um, is iRacing. I don't think I own any of the F1 games. Or I, maybe I do. Uh, I, I don't know which ones, but I'm going to get rid of those because I'm not sure which year. I think I have one or two of them, but I've never, I've never raced with them before or anything. Um, so let's go ahead and... Um, and get rid of all of those for now. And there's just so many games that it works with. And so much stuff. Even works with the airplanes in War Thunder. I actually have War Thunder. I haven't played it in forever. Um, so I'll leave that one checked. So anyway, so now, now if you go back to the games list, only those things are going to show up. So it makes that games list a lot more manageable. So anyway, we're going to configure iRacing. So let's go back here to where we were just at in the settings. And we are going to go, we're going to go to games. We're going to find iRacing. And we're going to, it says configure game right over here. So launch action. So that's going to be what it, you know, the action of launching it. And you have to, you click the launch action, and then uh, you tell it what you're going to use. If you're going to use the iRacing member website, or if you're going to use the, the it, it still calls it the beta UI, but iRacing calls it the iRacing UI now, which is what I use. And then it says define custom path, which is what you're going to have to do. And you cl click that, and then you just simply click this icon right here, and you navigate to wherever um, you have your iRacing installed to. And whenever you navigate there, I have mine installed on my D drive, which is um, a section of my uh, MVME SSD that I have partitioned off for some, some of the games and simulators that I play most often uh, to make them load faster. Um, so I installed it there, and it's program files x86 is where iRacing is located. And you go to iRacing, and once you're in iRacing, you go to the UI folder. And once you're in the UI folder, then it's iRacingUI.exe. You go ahead and double click that and it will put it here in this target. And once you've done that, you're good to go. You hit close. And now what is going to happen is, is that button now in the shortcuts is now functional. And of all the, all of the rest of the things that are showing now here in the game section, iRacing is the only one that is functional. And once you launch it once, it actually puts the shortcut right up here across the top for the game, the, the game that you launched, the most recent game you launched. The so next time you don't have to look for it, you can just go hit start game. Um, so it puts a shortcut to the shortcut up there on the top bar. And it even lets you change the configuration without going to the settings up here on this top bar. So that is how you're going to launch iRacing for now on once you're using SimHub. You just go and you click on the, the, uh, the icon right there in your games list, and it will launch iRacing. And then from that point forward, you can register for races, and uh, you can get into races and register for them, and your SimHub will be functional. Now, we're going to go set up our base shakers. Uh, if you have one or more than one, uh, we're going to go set those up now. And if you look right down here on the left-hand side, there is a, um, there is two sections. One's Shake It Base Shakers, and the other is Shake It Motors. And so we are going to do the Shake It Base Shakers is the only thing that we're going to deal with uh, right now. And so we're going to Shake It Base Shakers. And once we are there, um, there are effects to edit. And you can edit a bunch of these different effects um, and, and put a strength to the effect. You can change, change the frequency for each effect that the uh, bass shaker vibrates at. But before you do that, we need to go and tell it um, what sound card device uh, our bass shaker is hooked up to. And so we go to sound output. And this is what is going to show up for those uh, knob sound USB uh, sound cards and amplifiers in one. Um, it's going to say speakers, USB 2.0 device. And if you have more than one of them, so if you're, let's say you're going to get four of these base shakers and put on each of the four corners of your rig to represent um, the four different you know, wheels on your car, uh, then you can do that, but you're going to have to have two of those knob sound 
uh, amplifier sound card units in order to do that because each one of them is two channels and you need one channel per bass shaker. So you would need four channels. So you need two of these devices. And if you have two of them, then two of them would show up on the list and they would say speakers, USB 2.0 uh, device. And, they, and if there's more than one, they might actually have a number at the end of them. I'm not sure because um, I've only got the one. I know, in, in, I know that this is pulling from the Windows sound settings. And in the Windows sound settings, typically when you have more than one of the same kind of device, um, or the same model device, it'll put a one after it, so that's possible. And then what you do is you simply go over and you turn it on. You just click the the um, switch to on, and that and that turns it on. So then what we're going to do is once it's turned on and enabled, we're going to go back over here to uh, the effects profile, and these are all the different effects that are available. You got ABS act active, so when your anti lock breaks is active. Um, it can it can produce a rumble, and you can set the the, the frequency of that rumble. Uh, acceleration G force, so it's supposed to give you some kind of you know acceleration feeling uh, through the vibration as you start to accelerate. Uh, you can create your own custom effects. You got deceleration G forces, engine vibrations, gearing or gear grinding, um, gear shift, which I am using that, and I have it enabled. Uh, you have jump landings for some games that send that information. A lot of the rally games uh, will send jump impact information through the telemetry uh, to SimHub. Yeah, lateral G-force, miss gear, road impacts, road rumble, road vibration, um, RPMS, uh, simulated road texture, speed. You know, it gives you a vibration based off your speed. I'm not sure how realistic or immersive that would be. Uh, speed with curving. Um, you got wheel lock down here. And a lot of people use, use wheel lock. So when your front wheels lock up, um, they vibrate, especially if you have uh, four, uh, if you have either two or four transducers or, or base shakers. Um, if you have two, the best configuration is not left and right. If you only have two, uh, the best configuration is front and back. In that case, uh, the wheel lock on the front on the front wheels um, is is useful information uh, for the to configure for the front. And then wheel slip um, is very useful to configure for the rear wheels, so that you know when your rear wheels your rear wheels are spinning and you're burning up rear tire. That can help you there. It's very useful information. So guys, that is all the available effects. And here's the thing: if you turn all of them on and you turn all the volumes on them up pretty loud. Um, I mean, it's just going to be rumbling like crazy, and you're not going to be able to get any useful information out of it. So what I would suggest, and what I did, is you turn off everything and just go through these effects one at a time. Go through ABS, like turn everything off, and then turn ABS on and crank ABS up to 100%. Run a couple laps and see what it does. Say, is this useful information? Because um, you know, there's immersive information and there's useful information. And I don't want tons of immersive information because that will clutter out the useful information. And I want to use every tool I can and everything that I have hooked up to my rig to help me get useful information um, so that I can get faster. And that is my goal, is to get faster. And so what you do is you go in here and you simply, um, you know, turn them all off, turn one on at a time, run some laps with it, and see if you think it's useful. And here I'll show you, these are my settings. So I mean, my, the base shaker, the way I mount with it is very powerful. My cheeks will start vibrating if I turn it up really powerfully. So I got the master volume down to 30. Um, and then I've got the volume, the physical volume knob on the base shaker to like, um, I mean, it's set to like, I think like 75, 65, 75%. Um, and so, so anyway, so then I went and I, and the, the, here's the one things I found useful. I found the, I, the gear shifter was immersive and it was kind of cool because whenever you shift gears, it gives you the kind of a clud in your seat or a clunk in your seat, like, like your card, you know, when it kicks into gear, I thought that was cool. I don't know if it's going to help me get faster, but I thought it was immersive and it, and it only happens when you shift. So it's not overwhelming the useful information. And then I did road impacts when your tire is hitting stuff on the road. Uh, and then I did a road rumble, which is like rumble strips and stuff, which I like to feel the rumble strips. It's immersive and useful. It lets you know your tires hitting the rumble strip if you're trying to get close, you know, close without you know, hitting it hard. Um, and then if you look down through here, the other thing that I selected 
Um, and this was the most useful for me because I only right now I have the one base shaker configured, and that's the one directly under my seat. Um, so instead of doing wheel lock for the front, um, I did the wheel slip for the rear wheels. And I got that set at 50%. I set the frequency at 60 hertz. It tells you the frequency here that I have it set at 60 hertz. And I, I probably ought to get change the rumble uh, from 60 to something else. Because what you want to do is it's good to have the different effects that you are um, – the different effects that you're going to be using at different frequencies. That way they feel, they feel different. So you know which one is which. And uh, so I just kind of configured this the other day and I've raced like a week on it here and there. And, um, and so uh, I, I've changed some of these frequencies. I've changed the gear shift to 42 Hertz, the road impacts to 35. And I just need to separate these two out and change the frequency on, on these last two a bit. So I'm using four different vibrations, the, the gear shift, uh, the road impacts, road rumble, and the wheel slip. And the, the wheel slip is very useful information. It helps keep helps you save your rear tire and not burn it up so you can feel you know, when it's slipping. So I want to go in to each of these that I picked and show you the configuration on them. Um, it lets you test them. You hit the test button, and you can hear the ba feel the bass shaker on your butt and, and, and get the strength that it's going to be done at. And if you change the frequency, which you can do right here, it says frequency, uh, this is effect frequency. It's at 42 hertz, and you can hit up and down, you know, and change the frequency, and then hit test again, so you can see what the effect is going to feel like at that frequency. And so that's that's where I tune the frequencies is just right here in the software. I don't need to be in the simulator to tune these frequencies of of what I want the effect to to feel like. Um, and then uh, and then you go down to road impacts, and same thing. You can I change the frequency right here to 35. Um, and here's something cool as well. As you see the gamma factor, the gamma factor, I've got this set to 85. And what it does is you look at the curve there, and the, and the lower you bring that number, the, the, um, the longer it takes the effect to, to take hold. And you can set a threshold. Um, this is set at 5, so, it, so it, it's not going to do anything until it gets to 5%. And then at 5%, that's when it's going to start, the effect's going to take, take effect. If you take the decimal point clear to 1, it's going to be a linear line. It's going to be a straight, a straight linear line starting at 5%, because that's what I got the minimum threshold set at. Um, it's going to start at 5% and go to 100, and it's going to be a straight linear line. Um, if you want to make the effect more gradual, um, that's what I did for this one. I went to 85. So the lower you make that decimal, the more gradual the start of the effect is going to be, and then it's going to spike up more sharply uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, stronger, the stronger the effect is. Or the, not the stronger the effect, but the more the, more the event is happening uh, in the simulator. And so that's how I did road impacts, and I set the volume level at road impacts. It's at 43, but I think I had it at 45. I don't know why it went to 43. Um, and so there's road impacts, and then road rumble, same kind of a thing. This one I left linear. I had a minimum threshold of 5%, and then I left it because uh, it was getting really vib – it was vibrating a lot just on minor little – you know, just rough areas in the track that weren't even really that rough, just minor. And I wanted it to give me like, you know, impacts, like when I, when my tires hit something uh, or uh, on the road, on the rumble strips and stuff. And it also does grass and different things like that. So um, I left this one linear and I set a threshold at five as well. Volume um, is at 40, it was at 43. I, I don't, I don't, I guess I would didn't pick an even number um, 43, 42, whatever. Um, and then uh, the wheel slip one, let's take a look at it real quick because I've fine-tuned this one. I might do some more fine-tuning on it. I've got the volume at 50% for that. Um, you can test the front or the rear. If you have two base shakers, I would suggest doing front and rear if you wanted to do wheel slip. But here's the thing. Even if I, have a, even if I get a front base shaker, I'm going to turn off the front wheel slip. That's, that's understeer. That's whenever you're tight and your car is just sliding up the track. I don't need a, something shaking my pedals to know that my car is sliding up the track. But on the oversteer, which is the rear end getting a little loose, um, sometimes your rear wheels can slip and spin and you don't really know it immediately just by the way the car is handling, especially if you're into the throttle a little too heavy coming out of a turn and burning up and heating up the right rear just a little bit more than what you should. Sometimes you don't know it. So what I've done is I've set the threshold to 5%. 
uh, on the wheel slip. Again, I like that 5% threshold I found on my testing. And then look at what I've done to the curve. I've set the curve at 0.8, which gives you a little bit of a gradual curve there before it starts to go up a little more sharply. And what this has done for me is it's allowed me uh, to to – to catch that wheel slip whenever it starts to slip a bit and I can feel a subtle vibration and then as the wheel starts to slip and spin more um, then the vibration gets more intense and so this is I've got it set up only for the rear uh, rear wheels and so guys that's how that's how I configured mine um, and and again this this for me personally uh, this was a mix of immersion and and useful information. Um, I, some some guys, there's a uh, fellow on our team, the number one team driver, Robert Cook. Um, he turns on a few other things than I do. Um, he likes to turn on the RPM engine noise, um, and uh, or just the engine, the engine noise in general. Um, in the in the R, I think the RPMs as well. He turns on three or four more things than I do. Um, cause he likes, he likes the immersion. He likes to have to, 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 you know, the immersion level, uh, of the simulator to kick up a notch from having this base shaker. And that's his main thing with it is not as much useful information as it is the immersion. He likes having that clunk, you know, like I do on the gear shift. He likes having the feel, the engine vibration. Um, he likes those things. And that's, that's one very good thing to use a base shaker for, but he has an actual name brand butt kicker. Um, they cost a lot more than the setup that, that I have done in this video. Uh, but uh, you know, he likes, the, he likes the main thing for him is the immersion. For me, I want to feel some immersion. I really do. And the base shaker adds to that. But the, but my biggest thing is if I'm going to add something to my sim rig, I want it to give me useful information to help me get faster. And for me, the wheel slip really helps feeling that in my seat uh, when the rear end starts to slip just a hair on me. Um, so, guys, that is how I've configured mine. Feel free to steal my settings. Um, if you want to do this on your own, I more than more than happy to steal mine. But like I, but like I said, for you guys, what I would do so you know what each of these effects do is turn turn them on one at a time at max volume, uh, one at a time, just to see what they do and how it works. And when you find something you want to use, uh, then you would go in here to the details. And like I said, I would adjust this gamma factor a bit. You can adjust the minimum threshold uh, for when the effect kicks in. Because if you leave it at zero, it's just going to, every effect's going to be pretty much vibrating all the time. Uh, so you find that minimum threshold where it's not vibrating constantly. So guys, that's, that's, um, that's SimHub for you. And then once you're done with that, you just go back here to the games. You can launch iRacing. And uh, when you click on it here, it's going to, you click that button, it's going to launch iRacing for you. And here we are. It launched my iRacing. And so now that I'm in iRacing, I can go register for a test session. I can go register for a race. Anything that I do since I've launched it through SimHub, uh, my new base shaker setup will be working. And so, guys, that's how you do it. And you can just go in and have fun, start practicing, start racing, and, uh, and feel this new level of immersion and some more, uh, some more telemetry, feedback, vibration information for wheel slip and anything else uh, that you guys want to add uh, to it there that you feel is useful. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video that covers um, everything with this installation. Um, if you guys do not have a transducer or a base shaker on your rig yet, um, and you would like to uh, do the same build that we did here today uh, for under $100 uh, for this solution, uh, there's no overheating problems um, with this solution at all. I know uh, Robert Cook on our team, he has, a, he has a butt kicker. It's one of the previous models from a few years ago, and uh, he's dealt with some overheating issues if he turns the volume up on the butt kicker too loud um, I've never had that uh, the whole week and a half or so that I've been using this uh, solution uh, here at my house so I've never had an overheating problem in fact um, I'm only running the volume at 30% in sim hub as I showed you guys and I have the volume on the actual uh, uh, on the actual sound card slash amplifier the knob sound Amplifier, I have it set to like 65, 70%, something like that. And uh, I mean, it's, it's very strong. If I start turning up the volumes, um, I don't have a problem with overheating, but what I have a problem with is it shakes my cheeks and my teeth. And like, I mean, it's just, it's just too strong. Um, so this is a great solution, uh, very powerful under a hundred dollars so if you guys uh liked this video you like the build that we did and you are interested in doing it for your sim rig uh leave us a comment down below and tell us about it 
Uh, and then down below in the description, again, I have links to all the products uh, that I use for this build down there. And again, this entire build um, is under $100. And the things I'm counting in that price uh, is the base shaker itself, uh, the Dayton Audio BST-1, uh, the knob sound amplifier and sound card all in one, and the speaker wire uh, is what I'm including in that price, and it's under $100, and that will uh, get you set up on your SIM rig. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helps you out. And, again, let us know if you attempt this solution and how, what you think about it and if you like it as well. Um, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. It helps, helps our channel grow. We're, again, we're trying to hit that goal of 1,000 uh, subscribers here within the next few months. And the bell icon will get you notified anytime that we upload uh, new content and go live. And also give us a thumbs up if this helped you out and uh, it helps the video get, helps the YouTube algorithm get our video in front of more people. Check out the description down below. There's all kinds of cool stuff for you guys down there in the description. We have uh, an affiliate link to Majors Garage, um, which gives us a small commission on your first month subscription. Uh, we have a 10% off promo code to McConey Setup Shop for all for um, all their non-subscription purchases. Um, then we have several places you can get free setups. Uh, Majors Garage offers their uh, baseline plus setups for free, uh, as well as osracing.net has oval asphalt, oval dirt sets for free, community uploaded and community supported. And then uh, we have Edward's Setup Shop uh, down in the description below. You go to their website and they got a link to their Discord, and that's where all the setups are, and they have a great community, uh, probably getting close to 3,000 people in the Discord there. Uh, they have people who upload setups uh, that they have on their team. Uh, plus, anybody in the community can upload a setup, and they have setups for just about everything in iRacing. Uh, they're 100% free. Uh, they're competitive, stable. Uh, so if you guys want to go grab those and race with them, you can, or if you want to get them and uh, and you know build your own from them, uh, that would be cool, and they appreciate that as well, you guys coming in and participating in their Discord. And then last but not least down there in the description, um, we have a guy on Facebook that makes, makes uh, custom die cast models. And all you got to do is send in your um, paint file for iRacing and they can make, he can make a, a custom uh, die cast model of your iRacing car. It's down in the description too. So check out the description. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet. Click the bell icon and give us a thumbs up on the video if you like it. And that's all we've got for this one. Appreciate you being with us. For myself, Mike Howerton, and everybody here at Area 51, we appreciate you being with us here for these videos. And as always, we will see you in the next one.